hustle. It seems day after day we're talking about the same issues and we don't seem to get anywhere. Do you think that the finance ministers have achieved anything at all here? Um, basically, no. Uh, I think already they're uh, really behind the curve by some way. The, um, the EFSF uh, expansion, which was agreed in July, is already something which has been overtaken by events. I think Ollie Ryan made that very clear. Uh, we're now looking for an even larger bailout package, and, and how to achieve that is going to be extraordinarily complicated. A uh, lot of opposition to any expansion uh, coming out of Berlin at the moment. The ECB also extremely reluctant uh, to be dragged further into the realm of what it considers to be fiscal policy rather than monetary policy. Difficult to see how this, uh, this Gordian knot is untied at this precise moment in time. And while that's the case, markets are just going to continue to, uh, to ebb away, I'm afraid. Sentiment will remain negative. Does it still, Russell, hinge on exactly how the Greece situation plays out? Do you foresee the possibility here of an unorganized default? I think ultimately that's what we have to see. I mean, Greece is really effectively a lost cause, quite frankly. Um, you know, all this fiscal austerity is it's just too much crammed into too short a period of a time when they don't have an exchange rate offset. Uh, they're just chasing their own tails downwards. Um, and at some stage, I think we're, we're going to hit the political and social limits to that austerity. And in fact, arguably, we're already more or less there. I think the only way out for Greece is, is a very substantial restructuring of its debt, certainly far larger, far more widespread and deep-seated than uh, the uh, private sector involvement, which was agreed upon back in July. Fifty percent, would that be enough? Uh, maybe not, um, but it's certainly better than 21 percent. I think that's the figure which we had in July. Um, really, Greece needs to start almost from scratch, quite frankly. Uh, but a very large restructuring is, is really an absolute necessity at this stage, I think. And the EFSF, when it comes to uh, talk of leveraging that so, that so that it has more firepower, the two options that are on the table at the moment involving the ECB, uh, what, what do you think works best? Well, really what would work best is for all the various governments to um, increase their, uh, their contributions. Um, it doesn't feel like we can really expect that. I think the second best option is probably to get the ECB uh, to provide some additional uh, financing. But really the, the obstacles from, from the point of view of the Bundesbank and the other, should we say, more Teutonic elements of the governing council, the ECB, are enormous. Um, it's very hard to see how that's going to come about any time soon. In fact, there was a concern that you could actually see further resignations on the governing council related to this issue. And that would be an enormous uh, amount of damage for the European Central Bank uh, and come at an incredibly difficult time politically when there's this transfer of, of power uh, from Jean-Claude Trichet to, to Mario Draghi. Very quickly, Russell, what are you buying in terms of bonds at the moment? Um, bonds and bonds and bonds in, in, in Europe, uh, maybe with a few gilts thrown in as well. Um, treasuries elsewhere and, uh, and Australian government bonds as well. Um, we've today had the first hints of a, an easier monetary stance here by the Reserve Bank of Australia, which I think uh, means that uh, Australian government debt is increasingly becoming a safe haven as well as all those, uh, those other more familiar safe haven assets. All right, Russell Jones, thanks very much for sharing that with us.